Beginnings are never easy. If they were, we wouldn't be tempted to give up so easily. Starting something new is often overwhelming and terrifying all at the same time. This is precisely the reason why I decided to make this new series, mainly focusing on beginners, or as I like to call them, noobs in the watercolor world. Looking back over my art journey, I know I could have excelled so much faster and with far less stress if someone had just taken the time to walk me through the absolute basics. So that's what I'm gonna be doing here. In this new series, I'll be tackling 30 different ways to improve your skills at watercolor in as short as I can make them informational videos for all of you. For today's topic, we are going to be discussing watercolor paper. This is an easy fix for any watercolor beginner. If you aren't painting on the right paper, it won't turn out right for you. Let's admit, watercolor is already pretty hard. So using the wrong paper is going to make life even more difficult and frustrating. So let's make sure we get the right paper to work on. So what paper should we use? Hot press or cold press paper? Well, before I even talk about hot or cold press paper, let's first talk about how watercolor paper is different from other types of paper, such as drawing paper or mixed media paper. So how is watercolor paper different from other paper? Well, without getting into a lot of detail and the nitty gritty, the main difference is the weight or the thickness of the paper. As I'm sure you've noticed, water and paper don't mix well together. Watercolor paper was specifically designed to withstand a good amount of water without warping under its use and being completely unusable. Now, I wanna note that all paper, even watercolor paper, under too much water is going to warp. But because watercolor paper has a certain weight or thickness to it, it's not going to basically give in to that water or be abused to the point that it's unusable unless you completely, completely just decide to go overboard with the water and yeah. I'm just putting a disclaimer in there. If you put too much water on watercolor paper, you can make it unusable. Now, a good watercolor paper weight is 140 pounds. That's in America. For anywhere else in the world, it's you'll see a 300 GSM on the paper. So that is the typical weight that they recommend for watercolor paper. All right, so now that we have determined the difference between regular paper and watercolor paper, let's look at the other ways we classify or sort watercolor paper. You may have heard the terms artist and student grade paper tossed around a bit when referring to art supplies. These terms are referring to the quality of the paper. Student grade paper tends to be cheaper because the quality of the paper is not as good. This type of paper is great for experimenting and learning watercolor on. Artist grade paper, as I'm sure you can imagine, is more expensive. This paper is high quality paper that can take a lot of abuse and is often used by professionals since it allows them to push the limits of water to paper ratio. Another way watercolor paper is classified is by its packaging. You may have seen watercolor sold in pads and blocks. Pads are the least expensive option of the two, and as they sound, they're basically a stack of papers that are held together on one side. This is my preferred packaging type. I really like pads because I like to trace on the drawings. Um, I like to trace my drawings onto watercolor paper rather than just drawing directly onto the paper. 
And the reason for this is because I tend to be a bit heavy handed and I like to put a lot of pressure when I'm drawing. And this can be really problematic when erasing those pencil lines because they'll leave grooves in your paper as well as the erasing can leave marks on your paper. So this can be a little bit problematic later on. That's the reason why I trace a lot of my drawings onto my watercolor paper. So that is just something to keep in mind when you're thinking about buying pads. Now, blocks are the next option of packaging. These papers are glued on all four sides and they basically stretch your paper before you paint. So you don't have to stick down masking tape around it. Each paper can easily be removed from the block by a small slit you'll see on one side at the bottom. And basically you just stick in a palette knife or something similar to a mail opener into that slot and just go all the way around and it easily takes the paper off. Now, blocks are great for larger paintings since it prevents the paper from buckling and it just helps keep it very secure on that block. Now, the last way watercolor paper is classified is by the texture, also known as the tooth of the paper. This is where our hot and cold press come in. Watercolor paper that feels smooth to the touch is similar to mixed media paper or drawing paper, and it's called hot press paper. So I like to think of it as being hot ironed flat. That's how I like to keep them straight in my head. Now, bumpy watercolor paper is known as cold press paper. I like to think of goosebumps for cold press paper when keeping the two straight. Now you're probably wondering, okay, so why does the texture of the paper actually matter? Hot press paper or smooth paper due to its smooth texture is great for detail line work and for inking. The reason is because you're not having to fight those little bumps or grooves on the paper. It's similar to writing paper. Hot press paper also doesn't absorb water as quickly. This means you can paint um, on that paper and the paint kind of just sits on top of the paper while you're playing around with your paint and it allows you a lot more time to kind of experiment with your colors and figure out what you wanna do before that paint dries. And another thing that's nice about it is you can actually fix mistakes on it a lot easier because the paint is sitting on top of the paper rather than kind of soaking into it. Now, cold press paper or bumpy paper, on the other hand, is like a sponge, quickly absorbing the water and the paint placed on it. Although you do still have playtime with your paint, it does dry faster than hot press paper. Cold press paper allows the artist to have a great deal of water control while painting. For this reason, cold press paper is the most popular type of watercolor paper and is recommended as the best paper for beginners. And that's everything you need to know about watercolor paper. So now you're probably wondering what paper is actually best for me. Well, if you're a beginner, I recommend starting on cold pressed paper in a size range around nine to 12 inches. This size is big enough to allow you to play around with your washes, yet not large enough to become overwhelming. Also, the smaller your painting, usually the faster you can complete it, which I am all for that. I don't have a lot of patience. I like to sit down and finish a painting within a day or two. So that's just something else to keep in mind. If you have been using watercolor for some time now and you want to try adding maybe ink lines or finer details to your paintings, I highly recommend trying hot press paper. I've used it, I have used it on this channel, and I really, really like it too. Um, ultimately, the type of paper you use will be based on your personal preference and art style. So I hope you um, kind of got an idea of what hot press and cold press paper actually are and what are the differences and also what is the difference between watercolor paper and regular paper like drawing paper and mixed media. Hopefully this has 
this has cleared up some things in your brain for understanding watercolor paper and also what paper is best for you. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one and give you some more tips and tricks about how to improve your skills in watercolor. Thanks again. Bye.